Greetings from Sri Lanka, and uh, we are welcoming all of you from the historic Vijayarama House in uh, Kalambu, Sri Lanka. And uh, on behalf of uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association and the Faculty of Medicine and APAC, greetings and I born from Sri Lanka. And uh, now I would like to hand over to Professor Vajradisa Nayaka who is the co-organizer of this conference as the Faculty of Medicine University of Colombo, again to welcome you to Sri Lanka. Good morning, everybody from uh, Colombo. It's indeed a pleasure and a privilege for me as the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Colombo, which is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year to welcome all of you uh, to this historic virtual conference of your organization, which is um, organized by the um, Sri Lanka Medical Association in collaboration with the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Colombo. We have um, we have had an unprecedented uh, year this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In that context, uh, in, uh, amongst the challenges that we faced, uh, to be, uh, for us to have been able to host your conference is, I think, uh, take special significance. I would like to um, thank uh, you all for placing the trust in the Sri Lanka Medical Association and Sri Lanka uh, for, uh, to host this conference. And I, I hope that uh, from today, uh, in the next few days, you would have a very fruitful conference uh, where uh, you would be able to deliberate on the response to the COVID-19 pandemic so far and uh, how we should respond to it in the future as the uh, situation evolves. I'm particularly pleased, therefore, that uh, all of you uh, from around the Asia Pacific region, as well as beyond, have uh, joined us in this conference. And I wish all of you all the very best uh, in this conference and the work that you all are doing, the excellent work that you are doing as a, a global coalition, not be, uh, only confined to the Asia Pacific region, but beyond with the various partners. And I hope that your work goes from strength to strength. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would like to invite Professor Manoj Virasing also as uh, part of the organizing committee to welcome you again to Sri Lanka. Very good morning to all of you. As the head of the Department of Community Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, Colombo, who has been associated with APAC for many, many years now, I would like to welcome all of you to this General Assembly 2020 and the APAC conference. I hope uh, the deliberation would be a re very successful this year as usual. And I hope you will be enjoying this web-based uh, APAC. I think the first time we are having as a uh, as APAC conference and the General Assembly. So I will welcome you again. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Manoj. Now uh, I'll be inviting the most important person related to this General Assembly. This is actually a historic General Assembly because this is the first time ever in the history of APAC that we are having the General Assembly in the online format. So this is uh, going to do, uh, go down in the history. Now uh, I'm inviting Professor Vayun Lo, uh, the president of APAC, for her welcome address. Right. Thank, you so much, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Indika. Uh, <laughs> warm greetings to everyone. I'm everyone. I'm connected. Uh, you can hear me, right? So I'm connected, you know, to all of you from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And uh, again, warm greetings, Abuwan, to all my Sri Lankan uh, uh, counterparts there. And uh, before we begin this AGM, let me, you know, uh, just kind of introduce my uh, ESCO member. Uh, first of all, greetings to Professor uh, Vijara, Dean, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, 
and uh, Professor Vera Singh, Vice President SLMA, and of course, to our very dear Professor Indika, who is the organizing chair and currently the president of uh, SLMA. Uh, my ESCO member, uh, Professor Agostin, uh, University of Indonesia, who is the president elect of APAC, and uh, Professor Osman Ali, vice president of APAC, and also uh, our secretary general, Professor Bruce uh, McCock, and uh, Prof. Masner, uh, vice president, secretary, and also Prof. Cho, vice president uh, uh, in charge of uh, fin finance. Now, uh, with that, I think uh, we will now proceed uh, to the uh, agenda for today's uh, General Assembly. Uh, I reckon that all of you uh, have the report right in front of you, or perhaps uh, the Secretary can actually share uh, the document. Uh, can we go through the document? Could somebody please share the file? Fatin? You share the file? Yeah. Before we prepare, maybe if uh, the Dr. Uh, Bruce and others can come on screen and greet the audience and everyone, that would be nice. Uh, Professor Bruce as the regional uh, the director and uh, then yeah. uh, others, um, Agusti, President yes. I think, elect. Uh, Prof. And then, Masna will do the role order. call. Bruce, are call. you there? You can greet everyone. Yep. Prof. Masna, Prof. do you want to do the roll call? Yeah, we'll go into the roll call after that. Yes. Okay. Uh, over to you. Yes. Uh, Prof. Masa, are there any apologies and proxy? Uh, there's no proxy. Good okay. morning, everyone. Uh, but there is um, uh, apologies from uh, Korea, uh, Prof. So Yun Kim, as well as uh, the regional director. Thank you. Okay. So moving on now to the roll call, Prof. Masna. So I think uh, uh, we have thirty nine participants. Yeah, we we are we are we we have about forty seven uh, fifty seven active participants, and and uh, forty nine had uh, had responded to attend to this meeting. Okay, but so far I think we have about uh, thirty seven. Sorry, thirty nine thirty nine uh, uh, joining this online um, meeting. So I guess more will be coming, yeah, yeah, later on. I think they will join us uh, later on. And so, yeah, so uh, moving on right now, it's the uh, confirmation of the GA minutes, uh, November 2019. Prof. Indika, is there any problem? Uh, we, can, uh, we can put on the video, I mean the slides from uh, no, Kuala Lumpur. Not the video, not the video. Uh, let me open the document. Fatin, are you online? Then we can give the screen sharing right to you. Yes, yes Fatin is online. So to everyone, Fatin is the executive officer for the secretariat. Thank you. It's, it's on now. Okay, Prof, I'm sharing now. Right. Okay, so this is the, uh, you know, uh, APAC General Assembly that we have had. Uh, um, on 20th of November uh, last year. Right, and so could we kindly scroll to, right, moving on. So those are the representative, right. Uh, and so let us just quickly go through this minutes. Uh, we need somebody to pass it and uh, second it. Uh, so confirmation of minutes, right. And then a president's report. Uh, all the reports are actually attached in this document itself. So if you were to look at uh, behind, so all the appendix are there of all these uh, report. Right, uh, moving on. There's a president's report. Uh, next page, yes. Right, so he has reported on the journal as well. Yeah, and to his own task. Uh, also, we have the Vice President Report uh, from uh, Prof. Agostin, uh, no, from a previous uh, Prof. Chia, KS Chia. And then the Secretary uh, General Report, Prof. Bruce. And so he has actually briefly, you know, uh, talked about the SOFI uh, project that he's involved in. Uh, the Vice President Report, 
uh, administrative prof master. Okay, and also we have the uh, induction of the new uh, members last year. That's from Yangming University, Taiwan, Kathmandu University, Nepal, uh, University of North Sumatra, Indonesia, and Suramitra uh, Hasana Institute of Science, uh, also from Indonesia. And again, we have our treasurer's report, Prof Chol. Uh, it is in good uh, status, not in red. And then we have the update of all the regional directors' uh, uh, report. Okay. And also we briefly talk about the accreditation and the CCHB uh, under the Taipei Medical University. Prof. Uh, Betty Chiu has uh, briefly, you know, uh, enlightened us on all the uh, APAC CCHB uh, collaborating center for health promotion activities and also the journal as well. Uh, so I have uh, deliberated on the progress report of the uh, journal. And then subsequently, uh, it's actually the next uh, um, meeting in Surabaya, 52nd of 52nd uh, APEC conference. Okay, right. Uh, that's it. Uh, are there any uh, amendments to this uh, past minutes? Anyone? If I don't hear anything, then can somebody propose and second the minutes, please? Anyone who would like to propose this minutes to be passed? While I hear um, from Singapore, I propose the minutes to be passed. Right, thank you, uh, Prof. Tio. Uh, seconded? Happy to second, Wayun. Right, Bruce. okay, Professor Bruce, my court, second. Okay, now moving on uh, to the agenda, the next agenda, that's the President's report uh, by me. So let me quickly uh, walk through with you. Uh, can you show the slides? Right. Uh, Fatin, would it be possible to increase the font size of this? Yeah, because some people can't see it. Right. Okay. Right, now, uh, this is my report. These are all the activities done uh, last year uh, since I became the uh, uh, president. I mean, this year, since I became the president. Uh, so those are some of my, uh, some of the activities. Uh, can you move down, please scroll? Yeah. And so uh, as far as APEC activities are concerned, uh, we managed to have a few uh, uh, activities and webinar. And uh, there is a, a switch to all this uh, online webinar since we couldn't have this uh, physical meeting. And so the first thing we did uh, because of this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic, we have actually, sorry, the spelling error. We have the APEC coronavirus statement and I think this has all been uploaded, uh, you know, 2nd of February, 2020. And also uh, we are constantly uh, updating the APEC website as far as COVID-19 information is concerned. And uh, following that in April, because uh, in April, so we joined forces with, with uh, SLMA, uh, Sri Lankan Medical Association on the web banner, breaking the transmission chain to community empowerment. And I trust that some of our member institutions uh, uh, have also played a role in this uh, webinar uh, as uh, invited speakers. Uh, following that, again, we have another uh, webinar uh, carried out on 16th of June, uh, developing and accomplish COVID-19 exit strategy policy. And uh, on, in September onwards, again, we have the post-COVID-19 uh, paradigm shift in public health education. And uh, now itself, we have the uh, APEC E conference yeah, thanks to uh, University of Colombo, Professor Indica and SLMA uh, for helping us out in this uh, conference, which will convene, you know, the day after next, the day after tomorrow. And of course, uh, we are also in the process of planning the 52, uh, 52nd uh, APEC conference in Surabaya next year. Uh, scroll down a bit, Fatin. Yeah, so what about our international collaboration and APEC members activities? Uh, as far as the APEC KL is concerned, uh, we have uh, uh, we have a workshop on uh, about transformational leadership in public health to address challenges of IR4 and SDG. Thanks to Professor Osman Ali, uh, who headed this uh, uh, workshop, 
uh, at, a, at the, our National Institute of Public Health in Kuala Lumpur, yeah, and also uh, chaired by Prof, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Tahil. Uh, we also have the uh, APAC CCHB, uh, Professor Betty from Taipei Medical University together with Prof Cho, and uh, we have this uh, APAC educational webinar on post-COVID-19. Uh, they join forces uh, with the Seoul National uh, University with Professor Kim. And uh, what have we here, I've been extremely active uh, here uh, involved in the global network uh, for academic public health. And this global network for academic public health consists of these uh, six schools, uh, Association for School of Public Health in European uh, region, uh, APAC, US, Association for School of Public Health in Africa, uh, uh, Alliance um, Latin Americano de Salud Global. This is a Latin American Public Health Association. And we have also the Southeast Asian Public Health Education Institute, CPIT, and last Association for School and Public Health uh, Program of Public Health, yeah, uh, based in the uh, US. And uh, so what we have done in this uh, global network for academic public health, we constantly have our business meeting like almost every month, yeah, once a month, uh, to deliberate on some of the issues uh, pertaining to academic uh, public health. And so the first thing that we have done is uh, the statement, you know, in supporting WHO. At one point, there has been criticism uh, on the role of WHO uh, response to COVID-19 pandemic. And therefore, you know, we all endorse this statement and these are all uh, in a website published. And also we have a statement on a, uh, a Beirut explosion. Uh, this explosion uh, actually it was happened in August, 2020. And this is uh, showing our deep concern for the people of uh, Lebanon uh, and to show our solidarity. And also we had a web beta session, a conversation with author San, uh, Sandro Galea uh, he, she actually published a book and then we had a, a discussion, basically a webinar discussion about a book that she has written. Uh, we also have the Global Alliance World Academic Public Health uh, Association. Uh, there is this World Conference, Transforming Public Health Education, of which I think another member of uh, APEC is also involved, uh, as well as me. Uh, this was uh, held on the 16th of October. Uh, we have also this, uh, our, the Global Alliance rejecting the tobacco sponsorship. And again, uh, APEC has also endorsed this. And now all this information are actually uploaded as well in our APEC website. And last but not the least, uh, there is this circulation of this, uh, this is Public Health Global Grant Program. And uh, it has been circulated to all APEC members. And uh, the closing date is actually 20th of December. Initially, it was on the 4th of December, but has been extended. And from APEC itself, we have four applicants, uh, one from University of uh, uh, El Lanka, University of Malaya, University of the Philippines. And I think there's another one. I, I, there's, there's another one. So four member institution has actually applied for this uh, research program. Next. Right, I, I think that's about all uh, from my report here. Yeah, that's about all right. Okay, right. So that's uh, about all from me, uh, the president's report. Now, uh, are there any comments? Uh, can I now move on? Uh, can we pass this uh, report, please? Or anyone wants to deliberate on anything? Okay, so if I don't hear any comments, that means I'm moving on. Now, uh, there, there is a slight change in the agenda uh, in the sense that Professor Colin Beans, who is the Editor-in-Chief of the Asia-Pacific Journal of Public Health, uh, had to leave this meeting uh, earlier. So therefore, if I can call upon him to deliver his journal report first before we move on to the induction of new members by Prof Indica. Professor Colin, would you like to present your journal first? Since you have to leave earlier. Prof Colin. Okay, can, can you hear me all right, Wayne? Yeah. Right, I've just, I've just got to set up the share screen business here. <laughs> all this complicated IT. Kim, can you make Professor Colin Beans as the co-host? Yes, uh, Prof Colin, you can share your screen now. Yeah.
Okay, this is an abbreviated editor's report. The full report is in your document, so I'm not going to go over most of the points, but these are a few of the things that I would like to highlight. I think APAC is very fortunate <clears throat> in having uh, a very uh, high quality, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> journal for our members to read and to publish their papers. We face many challenges because we are a small organisation. We don't have the large financial resources of the multinational uh, publishers, but we, we battle on. Um, what we're after in the Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health is to improve our impact factor as much as we can. That's because we want organisations, ministries of health, schools of public health to take notice of our journal and to follow the recommendations that are there. And so we're always trying to increase our citation rate. We haven't done as well with that as we would like to have done over the last few years. Just a few points. Good reviews are cited most often. The top papers uh, in our journal with more than 100 citations have been reviews. Secondly, climate change is the top subject for citations and for downloads. What we need is really good topical reviews. Now, the last highly cited paper was published in 2016. <clears throat> and if you look through uh, the documents, you'll see who, who wrote that <laughs> document. Uh, but the problem is that we need consistency. So we need some of our top authors to write good reviews on public health topics related to the Asia Pacific region and submit them to us. Now, I have to complain to all of you members who are there and for those in your schools that you are representing. Most authors never bother to cite their own publications, even once. So that while we publish perhaps 100 articles per year, the big majority of them don't get any citations at all, which means that the authors of those papers don't bother to quote their uh, articles when they're publishing something else and don't bother to promote their articles to their colleagues. Now, every school of public health should have a file of publications by their own staff members so that when somebody is writing a paper, they can quote one or two of their own department's publications. That does several things. It boosts the H-index of your uh, writer of the paper. It will boost the prestige of your department. So please make sure that you really emphasise the importance of that. These are the top, uh, the top uh, papers, as you can see. Most of them are reviews and the top group of publications relate to climate change. Now, I must, I don't want to blow my own horn too much, but you can see the top paper. When we published that, we made sure that all of our colleagues who are interested in, in public health nutrition and the importance of the first thousand days of an infant's life in determining health for the rest of their lifetime, we sent information around to everybody. And so it's been frequently quoted in other people's, frequently cited in other articles. Why fewer citations? Well, we've got a lot of competition from open access journals. Open access journals have the big advantage that you can click on Google and there you get the full text of the article. 
Of course, the big disadvantage is that all of our members would have to pay $2,000 or thereabouts if we made the Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health an open access journal. Now, there are some open access journals which actually don't charge a fee, but they have sponsorship from from uh, philanthropic organisations. For example, the Annual Review of Public Health, which has an impact factor of around about 16. It's the, I think it's second only to the Lancet Journal of Global Health, which is also open access uh, in terms of its ranking in public health. And that's made possible by the fact that one of the big American foundations pays for the journal and allows open access throughout the world. Now, one of the things which puzzles me is the fact that APAC members have free access to our journal, and yet they're still not reading it and citing it as much as they should. So everybody present at the meeting today needs to remember the fact that you can have free access to all of the articles and you can tell everybody else that they can get free access to all of our articles for one month during the year. I think it's March every year where all of the articles on the SAGE network are available free. As I've said before, authors need to promote their work and to cite it themselves. And if there are any other reasons that you think we could address, I'd love to hear it. Well, we've published lots of papers. Um, I just want to remind you of some of the requirements for our journal because we are publishing a high quality journal. We now have the three dot points at the beginning, which describe what we already know about this subject. And then just so that people know exactly what they're going to get when they read the article, we have three more dot points, which tell us what this article adds. We don't require these for short communications or for letters to the editor, obviously for space reasons. We follow all of the international guidelines um, and particularly we follow consort, which is required for randomized controlled trials and PRISMA, which is required for review articles. Some of the important points that I would like to emphasize, please read recent issues of our journal to check the required format for papers before you submit. Also read the instructions to authors. We need English that is written to international journal standard and that requires a lot of hard work. We want you to follow established epidemiological designs so that obviously the top priority is for randomized controlled trials and cohort studies. And we want adequate representative samples. Nowadays, of course, all good articles end up as being part of a meta-analysis. And that means that the data has got to be of top quality. Years ago, we had a lot of problems with ethics approval. We don't have so many problems anymore, but you must get ethics approval prior to the commencement of data collection. And please, well, yeah, think about citing at least one article from our journal, just to show that the paper is relevant to our reading. Uh, and then we've got the other points that you can read. So remember that our journal is for the Asia Pacific region. And so occasionally we publish reviews, which are predominantly uh, studies from other regions. But if we do, we insist that at least in the discussion, you include some points about the relevance of your paper to our region. Now references must be up to date. We only include references from referee journals and perhaps government reports and documents. We don't like, we, well, we don't ever include personal communications, uh, newspapers, so-called grey literature and so on. 
we are a top quality journal, so we stick to high quality references. One point that we've been getting lately in the age of COVID is a lot of internet surveys. These are a real problem because we don't know exactly what population you have been serving. So generally, internet surveys don't get published. Uh, they may get published as a letter to the editor or a short communication. But unless we can work out some way of finding uh, the population that they represent and accurately calculating the response rate, then they'll remain in a kind of gray area. In the days of COVID, because we've had, I think, four or 500 submissions on COVID, we're publishing a lot of them as short communications and letter to the editor in order to get them out pretty quickly. Um, so we've got a lot of a lot of COVID manuscripts. We were able to provide limited English assistance, uh, but it's really only pretty limited. So they are the main points that I wanted to emphasize. And if you've got any questions about the journal, you can either ask me now, I think, if Prof, Prof Lowe thinks we've got enough time, or you can email me and I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Prof Colin. Right, uh, are there any comments from the floor? Anyone would like to comment on anything about the journal or any queries at all? If no, uh, there are no questions in the check box, I see. And so uh, we shall now move to on. Thank you so much, Prof Colin Baines. Thank you. Right, uh, the next agenda here is induction of new members. Professor Indica, over to you. Thank you, Professor Ayun. And uh, this is a very important event of the General Assembly where we uh, induce new members. Today, we are inducing two new members to our APAC family. And uh, both members are from Sri Lanka and uh, two very prestigious universities. One is Kotalawala Defense University. That's the only defense university in the country uh, that is doing human service, especially during this COVID pandemic as well. I mean, uh, also a university that conducts many health professionals courses. And the next university is University of Sri Jayawardenapura. Again, uh, one of the very prestigious universities from Sri Lanka and a very historic university uh, starting from a Buddhist monastic traditions. And it's another university that has taken pioneering role in community-based medical education, especially uh, pioneering role in Sri Lanka related to rural placement of tra training medical students in community-based medical education. First of all, I would like to invite Major General Milinda Piris, the Vice Chancellor of the Kotarawa Defense University, and Professor Namal Vijay Singh, Group Captain and the Dean, Faculty of Medicine of Kotarawa Defense University upstage to receive the certificate and uh, then speak a few words to the APAC family uh, uh, so that they'll be welcoming you. Uh, before that, I'd like to invite Professor Vajra Disanayaka read out the citation uh, to of, for awarding the membership, APAC membership for the Kotarawa Defense University. I invite Professor Vajra Disanayaka to the podium and uh, Major General Milinda Piris and Professor Namal Vijay Singh upstage. Good morning, uh, everybody, once again. Uh, the Governing Assembly of the Asia-Pacific Consortium for Public Health is honored to confer uh, all the rights and privileges of full membership to the General Sir John Kothalavala Defense University. This is presented at the induction ceremony held in Sri Lanka at the APAC General um, Assembly meeting on, 7th, uh, on the 7th day of December, 2020. Uh, the certificate is signed by uh, Vayung Lo, uh, 
uh, the president of APAC, and Bruce Maycock, the um, secretary general of APAC. And um, as was stated on behalf of the uh, Kotala Village Defense University, it would be um, uh, Major General Melinda Pires, um, accompanied by the dean of the uh, faculty, uh, who will be accepting this certificate. Uh, now I'd like to invite Professor Melinda Peris to speak a uh, few words, General Melinda Peris and Professor uh, Namal Vijay Singh, to just to uh, greet you to the IBAC family. Professor Indika Karnathilaka, the President of SLMA and uh, the Chief Organizer of the uh, conference, uh, Professor Vajir Ilsanayaka, uh, the, the Dean of uh, Kalam Medical Faculty, and all the uh, distinguished uh, delegates from overseas uh, in the region. And uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, considering uh, to uh, include us uh, in the membership of the, the distinguished uh, organization. Um, and uh, as a relatively young university uh, in Sri Lanka and one of the uh, the young medical faculties of the country, uh, we are committed uh, to uh, upgrade our standards and also upgrade our facilities and also involve with the, uh, the national as well as international programs uh, to serve the mankind. And uh, we knew uh, for a long time about the good work uh, done by your organization and also uh, the member uh, institutions in Sri Lanka, as well as the, the key personnel about their work and the commitment. Therefore, it was a privilege and we are humbled about uh, the honor given to us uh, uh, to be included in this prestigious organization. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Group Captain Namal Vijay Singh. Uh, now, uh, may I invite the dignitaries to take their seats in the audience, but we will be invited again for the group photo once both inductions are over. Can I invite Professor Vajiradi Sanayaka to read out the citation for the University of Sri Jawardhanapura? The Governing Assembly of the Asia-Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health is honored uh, to confer all rights and privileges of full membership uh, to the Sri uh, University of Sri Javadhanapura. Uh, this is presented at the induction ceremony held in Sri Lanka at the APAC General Assembly meeting on the 7th day of December 2020, uh, signed by uh, uh, Bayun Law, the um, uh, president of APAC, as well as Bruce Maycock, uh, the um, secretary general of APAC. Uh, it will be uh, accepted on behalf of the institution uh, by uh, Professor uh, Aloka Patirana, who is actually represented this morning uh, by the dean of the faculty of allied uh, health sciences of the university, uh, Professor Sherin Fernando. Uh, may I invite Professor Sherin Fernando to accept. Can I invite Professor Sherin Fernando to speak a few words and greet all of you at APAC? Professor uh, Indika Karnathilaka, Chairperson and the President of the Sri Lanka Medical Association. Professor Vajira Disanayaka, President, uh, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and uh, Professor Veera Singh. Uh, I am indeed 
delighted to receive this uh, award and to be conferred uh, as a member of your prestigious organization. I represent the University of Sri Jayawardenapura on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and the Dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences. I am here today as the Dean of the Faculty of Allied Health Sciences. So all the two institutions or the two faculties of our university, which contributes to uh, public health. So we look forward to working with all of you in the near future, in the future to uplift the public health in our country as well as the region and globally. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sharin, and please remain on stage. And again, can I may I invite Major General Melinda Pires and Professor Group Captain Namal Singer, and also Dr. Nihal Abesinga, who is the President of College of Community Physicians Sri Lanka for the group photo. And can I invite all of you joining online to switch on your videos so that we can take the group photo with the induction? IT team, are you ready? with all the pages. Please switch on your videos. IT team, you can take screenshots of all the members once we have switched on the videos. Yeah, please switch on the videos. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Now we come to the end of the induction ceremony. Uh, back to Prof. Ayun. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Indika, for the uh, induction. Uh, as uh, we all know that it is customary for APEC to induct new members. And I now therefore congratulate both the university, uh, University of Siri Jayawana Pura, Sri Lanka, and the uh, General Sajon Kalawala Defense University for being new members of APAC. Uh, I think this is a very important occasion for both new members and uh, APAC. And these are individuals who have come uh, to seek and improve communication and leadership uh, in the field of public health uh, uh, in APAC. So we look forward to your contribution uh, within APAC and to move uh, APAC and public health uh, forward in this region. Welcome aboard uh, to both our new members. Thank you. Uh, moving on right now, uh, we have uh, the President-elect report by Professor Agostin. Uh, can we carry on with the uh, report? Could you share your slides, please, Prof. Agostin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Atin, will you please help me to share the uh, slides, please? Or I can share from my, I can share my screen. You, you can do so. Prof. Agustin, Fatin, you can do. Fatin, Fatin, can you share? Okay, I will share. I don't have the, the screen sharing. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll share as from my, uh, okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's really nice to uh, meet all of you in this meeting. Um, this morning, I will um, share with you uh, the things that appointed to me to, uh, to be presented, uh, the proposal or the thought how we can um, develop ourselves together so that we can achieve the vision and mission of APEC. 
So uh, just uh, to remember, uh, these are the purpose of APEC. You can see these statements in our websites. Is uh, the, our organizations is meant to activate and expand organic uh, networks of international public and private public health institutions within the Asia Pacific region, and then to promote academic development in the field of public health through uh, coordinated efforts between public health academics and local uh, field experts, and to contribute to the fostering of good health uh, and the well being of all residents in the Asia Pacific uh, region. And then these are the uh, vision and mission uh, that um, stated in our constitutions. Our mission is to promote the translations of public health education and research into evidence-based policies and programs to improve the health and well-being of population in the Asia Pacific region. While our mission is to provide thought leadership in the translation of public health through education, research, and collaboration with public uh, stakeholder. So taking into consideration our uh, proposed visions and missions, I came up with these three proposed strategies that we can do together. The first strategy is to develop our organizations as a reference body for public health education in Asia Pacific region. There are another uh, association or another organization exists in, uh, in the world, in the global community. For example, in America region, in uh, European region or in other regions. But I think APEC is the most uh, relevant one to Asia Pacific region. So in this case, um, it is our, or I propose that uh, we can develop our organizations as a reference body for public health education in Asia Pacific region. The second strategy is to establish or to develop, to build our APEC uh, accreditation body to become a reputable international accreditation agency in Asia Pacific regions. As we all also uh, know that there are other accreditation bodies, international accreditation bodies uh, in American or in European regions. But I think APEC should play significant roles uh, as an international accreditation agency in Asia Pacific region. The third strategy is uh, to develop our organization as a hub for collaboration among the member institutions how APEC can facilitate collaboration as much as possible among as many as possible the member institutions. So for this strategy, I propose several activities for the first strategy. The first one, besides uh, focusing on quote unquote original public health education, I propose that we also expand our interest, our um, what um, topics also to cover specific field in public health, such as environmental health, occupational health and safety, hospital administration, public health administration, and global health. And then we develop standards for learning outcome and curriculum so that all the member institutions can revert the standards when they are developing their own learning outcomes and curriculum. And then uh, the next is, uh, it, it's really nice if we can also develop a standard material and content for some strategic courses that's very important in uh, our educational programs. And then last but not least, um, it's really nice if we can carry out capacity building trainings for our faculties, especially the young faculties. For the second strategy, besides the first one that we expand our uh, focus, not only uh, for original public health education, but also to another specific, uh, specific field in public health. And then we invite and involve faculties for APAC members who have interest, experience and competence in accreditations. I think we have to strengthen our accreditation body so that uh, the more uh, experts uh, involved in the accreditation body, um, I think we will be more acknowledged and also uh, um, we will increase the reputation of our accreditation body. Uh, it is uh, good if we can conduct benchmarking to other accreditation body. 
and then um, in uh, a certain situation, we can also provide technical assistance to the members if they are willing to uh, get a, uh, accreditation, international accreditation, and then they have some issues, for example. And of course, we have to promote our services. Um, developing the um, uh, website of our accreditation uh, body is really important so that um, it is really easy to be recognized by uh, universities that need uh, international accreditation in public health subject. Uh, last about uh, the fact activities related to the third strategy, how APEC can uh, be a hub of collaborations. I have three ideas here. The first one is uh, APEC, uh, developing APEC a platform for massive online open courses. So in this platform, every member universities can join, can uh, contribute uh, to any uh, courses, and then also can uh, participate uh, in the courses. This is really important because now, uh, especially um, triggering by triggered by the uh, COVID-19 pandemics, we are forced to work more online. So I think it's really um, a very good uh, opportunity if APEC can develop a special platform for massive online open courses. The second one is um, carry out the APEC mobility program for both students and faculties. Can be um, mobility uh, in, in the, um, uh, as a virtual mobility or um, uh, offline uh, mobility program. And then the last, um, how we can carry out uh, various joint student programs such as short courses, workshops, training, and internships that can be participated by uh, students of the member organizations. I think this is all um, my ideas. Uh, I invite um, comments and also ideas from all of you so that we can uh, develop together what we can uh, be done to achieve our visions and mission. Uh, thank you. So I return back the floor to the uh, Professor Mahyun Lo. Right. Thank you so much, Professor Augustine. You know, that's an excellent uh, suggestions and recommendations as to how, you know, uh, of all your strategies as to how to move, uh, how to achieve those vision and mission of uh, uh, APEC. Uh, can I invite some comments from the floor, please? Anyone? Can switch on your mics and the video and then comment. He'll comment, uh, Kevin, can I endorse what Prof. Augustine mentioned, especially the idea of the, uh, the online courses would be a great opportunity, especially during this pandemic, because during uh, even this conference where a huge amount of online learning material will be developed. And let's take this pandemic as an opportunity and then uh, develop material that can be shared across the APEC so that that would be helpful as the professional developer material, maybe in an online platform, ideally hosted by APEC would be uh, would be the ideal path to achieve this goal. I, I thank uh, Professor Kusumayati for coming up with this very important suggestion. I think there are many uh, who want to comment. You can raise your hands and come one by one. Lili Ko Suneta Gampodi, who want to go first? May I go first? Yes, please, Sunit. Thank you very much for this. Uh, you, know. you can hear me, right? Yes, yes very yes. clear. Right. Yeah, very clear. Very much, and I would also like to endorse the uh, proposal on uh, having a MOOC uh, massive online uh, platform for uh, APEC because uh, this we all know that the pandemic is not going to end within the next two, three months. So all the universities around the world, and especially the universities in part of the world, they are having some issues regarding uh, maintaining the public health education and uh, online program and a platform by a, a reputed organization will have a profound effect on this uh, training program. And uh, at, at the same time, as uh, Professor Indika mentioned, that this will be a good opportunity for students from uh, different parts of the world who usually who are not having the opportunity of going through international training this will be a very good opportunity for them and then 
when we are having it in the APAC platform, it will be good for APAC as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sunit. Uh, Lily, Ko. Lily, you want to go next? Anyone else want to make a comment? Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, Professor Gossin, I, I think those uh, strategies are very nicely put, uh, but uh, perhaps it's, we should also include the research collaboration among uh, the member institution. I think that's also equally important. And I think you have also highlighted the issue of uh, accreditation. Perhaps we could also improve on the quality of our APAC accreditation uh, process. And uh, lastly, I think it's the uh, student and academic mobility among member institutions. I think those are very important uh, activities that perhaps, you know, uh, APEC uh, could actually uh, uh, look into that. Thank you so much for the suggestions. Thank you. Uh, are there any comments, please? Prof. Masna. Prof. Masna, your mic is switched on. You want to make any comments? Yeah, I don't have any comment because I think what uh, has been mentioned by the president pertaining to including research collaboration and uh, including the faculty uh, apart from the student mobility program. Thank you. And yeah. uh, Sanjay Rampal, Prof. Sanjay. Hi. Prof. Sanjay, yeah, from UC of Malaya. And thank you, Prof. Augustine, for your presentation. With regards to the accreditation, can I suggest that we look into public health competencies rather than looking into standards for learning outcome? We look at what competencies we want from our public health professionals and then work top down. Thank you. I agree with you. We we should start from the competency and then and then going down to the learning on top and curriculum. Yeah. But if we look from the beginning when when we develop a uh, uh, the module for the accreditation, it it has been uh, started with core competencies. Yeah. If you look at the document, yeah. it, it started with all the core competencies that are needed uh, for a public health uh, people or person or specialist. I agree with Prof. Masna. They were based on the competency model. Uh, the public health accreditation framework of APAC is. So this is something maybe uh, in the afternoon or in the evening, uh, we'll be having the Dean's meeting. Maybe yeah. uh, during the Dean's meeting, actually we'll be discussing in detail how the public health could adapt into the new normal. So this would be an ideal opportunity to discuss uh, what uh, Professor Kusumayati mentioned. So that could be a starting point. Well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we have to respond at least for uh, uh, to two issues. One is the fourth industrial revolutions. And the second one is the COVID pandemic uh, that really changed our uh, way of life. So I think we have to uh, what uh, um, review again the competence and also the uh, learning outcome of public health education. And then APAC can be uh, the, the source of uh, what uh, ideas and innovations for all the members institutions. Right. Thank you so much, Professor Augustine, you know, for the uh, uh, input on all the various uh, strategies. And, uh, Can I, sorry? Uh, uh, Victor, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. All right. Uh, is, there, is there a timeline for the proposal? Because if you talk, you look at it, people are looking at a uh, current uh, short time as actually for the MOOC, MOOC courses. So what is, what, is your, what is your proposal going to be? Is there a timeline for it? Or, or, or the assembly, what is, what is the assembly things? I, I think uh, let's, let's hand out the Dean's no, no, meeting no, no, that would be the ideal yeah, academic platform to discuss. So uh, if, can we expect the Dean's meeting to come out with a timeline and a framework because that would be a platform to have a detailed discussion this afternoon. Yes, I, I agree, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Professor Betty, you want to say something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I appreciate what Agustin just proposed, and uh, uh, thank her so much. Just one point. 
uh, in her strategy, she said about besides the original public health education also cover uh, various topics. And I would like to bring your attention to cover global health and the health security due to the pandemic. That's security. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, so. Yeah. Surena and Lily, can we take those two comments only because of the interest of time? Yeah. Uh, and indicate that actually my point is I, we were discussing yesterday also then I quickly I would say that uh, working with this uh, global network and um, possibly collaborating with uh, other accrediting uh, uh, bodies in Europe and North America. So it's better than uh, we also can look at our model and see how uh, and compare their models and then we could be able to update that also. That's what I want to make. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Shall we move on, Prof. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for all the comments. And I trust that Prof. Agostin, uh, you know, will have to incorporate all those comments and then uh, we will then move on with that. All right. Thank you so much, Prof. Agostin. Right. Uh, let us now move on to uh, Bruce McCall, Secretary General Report. Professor McCall. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Wayun. Um, Tatin, are you able to uh, share my report? Yes. The host disable my screen sharing. Can the host make me? Farting. Can you enable farting? Yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Thank you, wonderful. Um, this will be a relatively short report. Um, back in 2019, November in Thailand, which seems years away now, um, given COVID, there was unanimous support by the General Assembly that uh, the planetary health would become a priority um, for APAC. And during the confusion and uh, everything else that uh, COVID introduced, I have attempted to try and keep this as part of the agenda moving forward. And fortunately, I was invited to represent APAC at a number of different international fora. And so they included the Future Earth Health Knowledge Action Network, and Future Earth was a, a uh, organization that came out of the United Nations. I was invited to represent us also at the Blue Climate Initiative, which comes out of the US and um, also links in with the uh, French Polynesia Tetaroa Society. Um, Blue Communities, which is a UK funded project that operates in Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, China, and the Philippines. And then I alerted you to the fact that we were applying for funding to be able to present at the World Leadership Dialogue, which was meant to be held in Rome, but ended up being a virtual um, conference. We were successful with that, and I'll talk about that um, a little bit. And then the final one, was a group called Seas, Oceans and Public Health in Europe. So first of all, I would just say that I'm deeply indebted to Professor Arwan, who from the University of Malaya, who represented APAC at the World Leadership Dialogue. And the topic that they were speaking about was whether um, it was in the health systems and climate change section, and is asking the question, is health professional education preparing the health sector for the challenge of the climate change? Now, I received feedback that Professor Awang was actually the star of that particular dialogue section. And that dialogue section was identified as the best during the, um, during the uh, World Leadership Dialogue. Our partners in this um, was the Lancet Countdown the Australasian Medical Association, and also the University of Notre Dame in Australia. And the outcome that they were 
asking the world to be considering was the aspect around competencies and training requirements for public health as climate change and planetary health become bigger issues for us to consider. So that was an outstanding outcome for APAC to be represented, um, particularly in partnership with the Lancet Countdown. I also, as part of the Blue, Community, uh, Blue, uh, Blue Climate Initiative, um, recently co-authored a report on safeguarding human health and well-being against climate change. And that was an ocean-based community-centered proposal. That proposal has gone to funders in the United States. And we're hoping um, that there will be some ongoing um, development and activity and some potential release of fundings associated with that. We also contributed to a final report that was presented to the European Parliament on the strategic research agenda around oceans and human health in Europe. And this ties in with additional work that um, we were doing. And if you keep on scrolling down, Fatim, just down to um, this next dot point, the Future Health, uh, the Future Earth Health Action Knowledge Network also released recently released a publication that was calling for transdisciplinary research priorities and planetary health um, in relation to sustainable development goals. Now, this group, um, members of this group also partnered with David Attenborough in the development of the documentary called Extinction, which some of you um, may have viewed. And so again, APAC contributed some uh, participations and content into this particular, particular report. So I feel that in the last year, we've actually been able to position ourselves as an organization which people are coming to. And there are some other publications that have come through recently in relation to climate change, complementary feeding and dietary guidelines that are again positioning APAC as a potential um, leader in this area in the Asia Pacific which I'm hoping will actually also relate to enable us to access funding. And the future Earth um, recommendations will be going to the UN, trying to again elicit funding responses um, from them. So I'll pause now and wait for comment. Thank you so much, uh, Bruce. Yeah, can I invite some comments, please? Okay, if there are no comments, I think we will endorse that. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Bruce. Thank you so much. Right, uh, yes. let's move on to the next agenda. That is reports from all the vice president. Uh, Prof. Inika. Uh, thank you, Prof. Ayun. I'll make uh, my report very brief. Basically, uh, we have uh, conducted several activities in collaboration with APEC uh, in March uh, when the pandemic started during the height. Uh, as you mentioned, we have conducted an international webinar where we learn from each other. And uh, now we are having this very important activity. And tomorrow we are starting the conference, which we'll be discussing later. So the only message that I want to highlight is that as a public health, leading public health association in the Asia Pacific, we have to adapt to this uh, new normal and the pandemic and uh, how we can adapt and thrive. I think that is the message that we have to take over. And uh, let's take this as a golden opportunity and uh, to take new ideas and innovative methods, especially the use of IT. Now, today also we are having this very historic meeting, uh, totally on uh, information technology basis and uh, proving to be very successful. So my message is that basically as an organization, uh, let's adapt and thrive. I think APEC can do that. Thank you. Over. Thank you so much, Prof. Indika. Thank you. Uh, uh, right, now moving on is Professor Osman Ali, but unfortunately uh, he's not here with us and uh, we didn't get his uh, a, a report as well. And so the next one is Prof uh, Masna. Thank Prof you. Masna, yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, referring to the report that I've submitted, uh, this is pertaining to the Executive Council meeting. Although we are in the era of the pandemic, we had still had uh, our ECM. And um, we had the first one right immediately after the Bangkok conference. And the second one we had 
uh, early um, I think it was it was on the 1st of October yeah that was the second one uh, but uh, in between we had uh, the the top management meetings okay I think we had twice uh, and uh, this uh, this uh, this meeting is the third ECM, which was supposed to be um, held at uh, Surabaya, but uh, nevertheless, this is uh, via online and the General Assembly as of today. So, with regards to the billing for the membership, um, uh, despite the pandemic and most of us are online, we still managed to collect um, the fee from our members. And uh, up to date, we have fifty-seven out of ninety-eight institutions. Who, who can be considered as active members, uh, meaning that they have been paying for the last uh, two years. And we have uh, fortunately um, managed to get uh, several institutions who had reactivated their memberships, so as, such as Monash University, Sinchuan, University of Science Malaysia, National Institutes of Health Malaysia. In fact, National Institute of Health Malaysia has been very active um, uh, without fail. It's just that they have uh, change from Ministry of Health to the name of National Institute of Health and Chulalongkorn University. And um, as for the recruitment of new members, uh, uh, congratulations to these three universities. Uh, we had uh, uh, witnessed the induction of two universities from Sri Lanka, and we've yet to witness the induction of National Chengkung University, which, we, which will be uh, held in Surabaya in uh, 2021. We also uh, receive individual uh, membership from uh, Dr. Tomohiro Yumi Mura and Dr. Suman Chakravarti. Uh, usually the ECM will endorse um, if it is um, uh, suggested or recommended by the regional directors. Uh, and um, we have yet to uh, follow up on uh, potential new members. Uh, I think um, we have been doing this uh, uh, several times and we will continue to do this until <laughs> they um, really say that they, they really don't want to join us. Uh, and I think as for the APEC vision and mission had been uh, uh, presented by Dr. Agustin. And uh, this is something that I think most of you would have noticed if you look at our website, the APEC brochure, which had uh, kindly prepared by uh, Dr. Indika. Okay, and we had, uh, we actually also have the hard copies, but uh, unfortunately, uh, since we are not meeting uh, uh, physically, so we are not able to distribute it. Uh, for the APEC accreditation matters, um, this is something that uh, was really helped because of the pandemic, okay. Uh, it was supposed to be University of Yongze, uh, which was supposed to be in February 2020. However, uh, we've yet to uh, get the feedback from them whether they still want to continue in 2021 and the secretariat will continue to follow up on this matter and we welcome any other university who wish to be accredited by APEC and for the record there are so far three universities that have been accredited by APEC that is University of Malaya, University of uh, Mahido and um, uh, University of Indonesia, yeah, Universitas Indonesia. As for APEC activities, I think this has been presented by uh, the president um, with regards to all the webinars that we uh, had um, co-organized. And is there anything uh, further down, please? Okay, and the APEC e-conference uh, uh, will be presented by Dr. Indica later and the 52nd APEC conference 2021, which was supposed to be in uh, this year uh, at uh, Indonesia, uh, organized by University of Erlanga. Uh, this will be uh, uh, postponed to uh, October 2021. Um, I would like to announce that uh, there are three uh, change, uh, change, changes with regards to the deed. Okay, for University of Indonesia, we welcome Dr. Sabrina. Uh, for University of Erlanga, we welcome Dr. Santi. And for University of Malaya, is uh, Dr. April. Uh, so we hope that uh, any other universities who have a change uh, with regards to the deans, uh, please do inform uh, the secretariat so that we will not miss your university. And then uh, I've already put up in the chat pertaining to um, access uh, to the access to our journal. Okay, uh, usually we, uh, we we give the link to the dean, but but otherwise you can 
your your faculty members or the students they can register via their uh, official email and then just click uh, uh, one of the institutions under the prescribed or subscribed institution in the list. That's all. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Masna. All right. Uh, can I invite some comments, please? Uh, Prof. Masna, uh, I think uh, in one of your um, you know slides, uh, you have shown some of the APEC activities. I think uh, there is something missing there. I think the APEC CCHP under TMU and uh, Yongsai University, uh, I think they have actually organized at uh, CCHP uh, uh, webinar. I, I'm, I'm sure Prof. Betty will, will mention it at her regional report uh, presentation later on. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, we will include that. Yeah. Sorry for the mistake. Yeah. Uh, any further comments for this report? If no, thank you so much, Prof. Masna. Uh, we move on to our treasurer's report. Uh, Prof. Cho. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, good morning, all the participants of the conference. Uh, I, my report, you can see in the appendix uh, to 6.1 and 6.2. Okay. And uh, the total amount of 2020 membership payment received on November 26 uh, is around 58.6 thousand uh, US dollars from 42 APEC member institutions. But this is a quite different, uh, uh, as I mentioned in Masana, we uh, heard talk about a 57%. I think this uh, difference due to the time gap, okay? And uh, uh, the uh, membership payment is beyond my, uh, my uh, initially anticipated uh, for the membership because uh, in, the, in the beginning of the year, I anticipate the income will be declined as a result of COVID pandemic. But fortunately, our main, our main uh, membership income is still maintained very stable. So I will thank all the members uh, in the APAP and the others uh, and the secretary office for doing a great job at this time. And I will also thank uh, the, the uh, President Novayun and uh, our uh, uh, institution, we hold uh, around four uh, webinars in this year. I think this active activity uh, will encourage our member to uh, we are willing to pay the membership. And uh, uh, meanwhile, the current balance in Taipei account is around 363,000 US dollars. I think this uh, account is quite uh, the, state, the financial station is very healthy and stable. So in the near future, we have uh, the, the capacity to uh, pay more uh, activity related in education, more in research around the APEX uh, family. And uh, I, I will also mention the, 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 the uh, good, uh, good uh, case I give my sincere thanks to Dean CT, uh, College of Public Health, uh, Mahito University. Her uh, show very excellent management of the, uh, the 50 anniversary conference of the APEC uh, held in 1920. Uh, 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 he returned our same money of the 5,000 US dollars and also uh, give us the 10% the benefit. I think this is a very unique case. Uh, as I was the treasurer more than uh, nearly 10 years, it's a very good model uh, to uh, running the, the, our anniversary conference of the APEC. So I, I think city will be our uh, good model. And I, I, I hope uh, her can share his, his uh, experience uh, to the other uh, uh, in the institute who will be running our future uh, annual conference on the APEC. And uh, lastly, I will, I will uh, sincerely wish everyone to stay healthy and hope that the COVID-19 vaccine will soon become available in the near future. And my uh, 21st, uh, 2021st budget will be uh, on the uh, ship you can see and and I ask for your review and have you approved. And you can see 
I will as mention men mentioned in the item four. Uh, in other uh, project, I uh, stay. I I saving. A, I I uh, propose around the uh, thirty thousand US dollar for the project uh, based on the ECM or any uh, institution who will be uh, proposed to the, the, the in our ECM, and I hope can help. To in, uh, to empowerment all the education and the research around our uh, family, especially based on the, the strategic plan under the purpose of the, our present elect uh, Augustin. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much, Professor Cho. It's really nice, you know, uh, uh, to see our budget, uh, you know, uh, in a very nice shape and not and not in red. So I reckon that, you know, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we are not using a lot of money because of the traveling. And therefore, I hope we can actually put, uh, you know, our budget uh, into good use. Uh, Prof Cho, I, I just have a query here. Now, in your report, you mentioned that we have 42 active members, but I think we have 57 active members. Because last year, when you showed the report, it was also 40 something. But I believe that last year, we have new members from a few of new members from Indonesia. Uh, would you like to clarify that discrepancy? Yeah, yeah I will clarify and uh, we will check with the master now. Okay. Uh, no, uh, Prof, uh, Prof, Prof Lo, the one that uh, Prof Cho mentioned is the, the payers of 2020. Active members is uh, they have been paying in. The, I mean, because we we define non-active members of those as those who have not been paying for the last two years. Yeah. So that's why the number is different. What he was oh. mentioning is the payers of 2020. What I was referring is the active members. That means if they have not paid this year, they have paid last year, and so they are still considered as active members. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just want to ask. Uh, Prof uh, Cho, with regards to the project allocation of the 30,000, uh, is it for one project or it, will it be distributed uh, according to um, the, uh, the proposal uh, submission by the regional directors? Because we had agreed before that uh, for any um, uh, financial support that, that uh, researchers need, uh, from APEC, it will go through the uh, regional directors. So whether or not this 30,000 is uh, for several projects uh, under the, region, the regional directors or is for one or two projects? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, yeah. Yeah, I, I think perhaps we should set a ceiling level for each project because some project might, might be very expensive and some project might be very cheap. So if we could set a ceiling, I think I think that it will benefit in a lot more people. Yes, because I think this is very good because uh, before yeah. this, uh, the allocation given for each of the regional directors for them to do activity is only 1,000 US dollar. Okay, of which uh, Indonesia, um, uh, uh, Thailand, Taiwan and uh, Malaysia, we had applied and, and we had conducted uh, research, uh, sorry, uh, we had conducted uh, seminar and workshops. So with this, I think uh, it will be a, a, a an opportunity for us to, uh, or, or the benefits that can be shared by all the members with regards to research. Because often when uh, we recruit new members, they always ask us whether there is any uh, uh, allocation for research to be conducted. So uh, thank you very much for uh, allocating uh, this money for, for the projects. Uh, I'm sure there will be many applications after this. Yeah, yeah, I support. I encourage you that all the regional officers they can propose the project to the ECM. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Any further comments? Yes, Colin. Yeah. Colin wants to say something. Wei Yun, um, I noticed on the budget there's provision for five or six issues of the journal uh, next year. We're actually hoping that as COVID subsides, and there's less of a crisis that we may be able to get up to seven or eight uh, issues next year. We certainly have a huge number of articles. We reject 80 to 90% of articles. It would be nice to be able to publish uh, some more. That depends on having more space and it depends on being able to uh, improve the quality of our articles. But it would be nice if we could have that provision in the budget. Thank you. Yeah, uh, because every year under our journal, we have eight issues a year. So uh, yeah, every year we produce eight issues. Yeah. 
Right, are there any comments for Prof Cho about the money? If no, we will proceed on. Thank you so much, Professor Cho. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, now we move on to the next agenda. agenda uh, item number 11, reports from the various regional director. Uh, can you share the slides, please, Fatih? From one director to another director. Right, uh, Professor Philip Baker. Philip, are you there? Uh, you and Philip uh, told me he was unable to attend oh, uh, today. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, so can we move on to the next uh, director? And whose is this? Indonesia. Professor Agostin. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, um, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, similar to the situation in other countries, um, so Indonesia also very much affected by the COVID-19 pandemics. And so far, uh, the situations in Indonesia is still very challenging. Um, during the last week, we have the highest record of new cases in the day. And uh, we really still very uh, in very tough situation. Um, the highest uh, cases of COVID-19 happen in the big cities such as Jakarta, Surabaya, and big uh, and provinces with a very high people mobility. And then, uh, due to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, higher education institution also affected very much. One of the very um, uh, clear um, impact of the pandemic is the reductions of the um, uh, institution's um, financial income, um, range from 30 up to 40 to 50 percent uh, reductions of the estimation, and this is a very tough situation. In one hand, we have a reduced income. In the other hand, we have to apply new standards. Um, so that we can um, prevent COVID uh, transmissions in our campus. And then also we still have a very high expectations from the community and also the government about our contributions to um, deal with the uh, COVID pandemic. <clears throat> so in Indonesia, COVID-19 to some extent have a quote unquote a good impact on the existence of public health professionals. Before, many people only recognize uh, medical doctors, a dentist, uh, a dentist, a nurse, for example, as um, main uh, public health uh, personnel. But now they know that there are public health uh, personnel that should play a major role in um, facing the pandemic. So um, for, for the higher education, our government have uh, decided to uh, refrain all face-to-face -face, uh, teaching and learning activities. We have to apply long distance teaching and learning for all courses. And then we have to hold all uh, teaching and learning activities that using uh, laboratory practicum, clinical practices, internships, field-based learning. So we have to reschedule all those uh, activities. And if possible, we change it into other learning method. And in this situation, many institutions, higher education institutions um, face a very tough situations. In one hand, they have to uh, prepare their lecturers to be able to cope with the situations. They have to prepare also their students. Many of them should return back to their home countries and in, in their home country, there is no good um, uh, internet um, uh, what, uh, connection, for example. And then many uh, universities also have to improve their uh, infrastructure to uh, support the long distance uh, teaching and learning. So um, very fast, we change our um, teaching and learning uh, manners. 
all student seminars for uh, proposal, for uh, ethical clearance, for uh, ed uh, uh, exams, all done in the um, um, uh, dual modes can be um, some maybe um, attend in face-to-face -face meeting, but others will attend um, uh, via online um, uh, connections. And then we also put very high uh, attention to students' research that we ha they have to do for their thesis and dissertations. And we really encourage them to, um, uh, to collect the data using all possible um, uh, technology and to uh, prevent face-to-face um, -face contact with the um, uh, with the samples or with the uh, objects, uh, subjects of the research. Uh, we did, uh, uh, and then uh, until now, we do a very um, what strict um, uh, ethical clearance to, um, uh, to ensure that the, both the students and also the, um, the samples, the, the, uh, the subjects also in safe uh, situations. So we adjust also the requirements for attendance. We adjust the evaluation methods. We extend the semester period and then we cancel inter-semester courses. And then we apply special academic policy for those in a very uh, last semester so that they can avoid dropouts of them. And then we apply also a special financial policy on giving reductions uh, of tuition fee of students so this is a very, very tough situation for both the students also and also the school itself. And then we conduct also internet-based testing for the entrance examinations. So uh, just currently two weeks ago, our government already decided to allow the schools and university to start their, uh, our face-to-face -face teaching and learning in the next semester. But it should be based on first the recommendation from the local task force of COVID-19 pandemic control at the district or provincial level and agreement between the school management and the parents committee. For, for, the, for the university, the decision is on the university management whether we will start the face-to-face -face teaching and learning or not. So in this situation now, we are preparing ourselves to start a blended teaching and learning method in the next semester. Uh, and then we really hope that we can uh, do the face-to-face -face, um, teaching and learning because um, all activities related to um, practicum field practice already halted and then uh, the, the process, uh, educational process in Indonesia is very much impacted. And then, um, so in this case, uh, for the public health education, we change the field-based teaching and learning activities. We um, do not uh, do again uh, a big a group uh, field-based uh, learning. And then we um, uh, make a very small group. And then we also um, prohibit the students to conduct community-based activities that cause people to gather. Uh, instead, we encourage them to um, implement individual and family interventions and not uh, a big uh, community interventions. Uh, as for the community-based and institutional-based research, we encourage to use online methods for data collection with a very uh, strict ethical review of the research. Uh, the, the second thing that I want to share is the impact of our new policy in higher education in Indonesia. The name of the new policy is the Merdeka Belajar Policy or Freedom to Learn. This policy allows the students to take about 60 credits of out, of out uh, 144 credits to take from other institutions from their original study programs. They can take the, the credits from other programs in the same university or from another universities. They can also take credits from uh, by doing activities uh, such as internships and then also research in industries, research institutions, civil society organizations, villages, etc. So this is a very what a very significant policy that make all of us change our curriculum. All the bachelor program curriculum now has been uh, has to be changed because we have to apply this uh, freedom to learn policy. 
So the second thing is the, the Ministry of Education, our Ministry of Education is encourage us to do international standardization to get international accreditation for our program. So in this case, um, our Ministry of Education has the list of the uh, international accreditation body that can be uh, uh, acknowledged by the minister. In this case, uh, there is no um, international accreditation body for public health. So um, we need to propose to our minister what uh, accreditation body uh, can be acknowledged by the Ministry of Education. And I propose that APEC accreditation body can be uh, proposed uh, to our minister, our ministry to be the international accreditation body for uh, public health in Indonesia. So taking into consideration those situations, we, uh, we propose activities for APEC. First is to develop student mobility programs as well as also faculty mobility programs. We can conduct it in offline or online mobility uh, programs. And then APEC in this case play as a hub for the collaboration among the members institutions. And the second one is uh, develop a platform of online learning that allow all members to participate and provide also the online courses. And then the third one is strengthen our APEC accreditation body so that we will be recognized by international community and then uh, we can um, what um, use the service for our body to, um, to prove the quality of our program. I think this is the report from Indonesia. Thank you. I return back to Mrs. Uh, Chairman. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Agostin. Thank you. I think uh, your points are very well taken. Uh, are there any comments for Prof. Agostin on this uh, regional report? Right. Uh, if no, thank you so much, Prof. Agostin. Yeah, can we move on to the next report, please? Martin? Uh, Professor Jimba. Uh, somehow, uh, thank you very much. I cannot, uh, okay. Uh, my point is only one, uh, membership issues. And uh, uh, I have been uh, taking uh, up this issue for about 15 years uh, since I started to work with APAC, uh, considering the situation of Japan and some similar countries. Uh, in Japan, the uh, public health indicator is very good, one of the best in the world, but the situation of uh, uh, public health education is not uh, the best. And uh, currently we have five schools of public health. Most of them are under the uh, Graduate School of Medicine. Uh, one or two are independent, but are very small. And we have 14 public health programs also under medical schools. And the remaining medical schools are about 60. Uh, they have only one or two department of public health or social medicine. So uh, our public health education is quite different from the United States or other European countries. And still, uh, as I mentioned uh, many times, uh, all of these institutions are charged $2,000 uh, if they want to join uh, APAC. And this is uh, one reason why Japan's membership is quite limited. Uh, if I remember correctly, only four, uh, uh, four institutions belong to APAC now. So in order to improve this situation, uh, I want to propose uh, the membership fee should be changed by the size of uh, institution, uh, something like 2,000, 1,000, and 500. And I realize the situation in Korea and some other countries are similar. So we uh, will make uh, a working group to make more, uh, to make it more specific in the coming one year. 
And as I am retiring within two years, uh, before <laughs> retire my retirement, I want to make a milestone on this issue. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, uh, Professor Jimba. So basically what you're recommending is that we restructure this uh, membership fees into three categories. One is 2,000 US dollar, the other one is 1,000, and the other one is based, uh, is uh, 5,000 US dollars. And yes. so um, all this uh, restructuring of this membership, this tree is based on what? The number of uh, faculty. The, the number of faculty within an institution, yeah? Yes. Right, right, I see. Mm. Yeah. Madam Chairman? Yes. Uh, just want to um, update everyone that uh, so far uh, the membership uh, Registration fee is based on uh, which which uh, income income group the country belongs to. So we have um, upper income country, which is two thousand US dollar. Uh, in institutions under middle income country, which is uh, one thousand US dollar, and and the low, lower income country, which is five hundred US dollar. So um, whether we want to uh, add this new category or we want to switch from the previous category to this new category that is uh, for us to discuss. Yes, the uh, assumption is uh, in high income countries, the level or size of school of public health or public health department is the same. This is an assumption and this assumption does not make sense in Japan. So that's why I'm proposing to change uh, or restructure the mechanism. Okay, so so I mean, we have to be clear that uh, we are going to change rather than add on the existing um, category, right? Uh, maybe modify. Okay. Uh, can I have uh, more, more discussion on this matter, please? Uh, because this involves uh, uh, money, yeah? And uh, uh, when we change something, I think it's for the benefit for the whole APAC, uh, not to only just one particular country. Can uh, I invite some comments, please? Sorry, uh, in addition, I think uh, uh, when we talk about um, the, the, the general access by, by the member institution, it's not only limited to those within that faculty, right? Uh, yeah, including uh, for uh, membership registration for conference because uh, yeah. we have uh, participants from non-faculty uh, of medicine or non-faculty of public health who are joining yeah. and we are giving them uh, the yes. privilege of uh, registration fee as the member institution. Yes, for the whole university. Hmm. Yeah, uh, this is a bit complex issue and uh, in the past we have discussed uh, about the voting rights uh, of small institution too. So I think uh, uh, we need to discuss uh, more in detail. Uh, we, we have discussed many times, but uh, uh, we should do it more and uh, get conclusion. Yeah, because I, I think it's very important to, to have a clearer picture of this, of this uh, restructuring of the subscription fees. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I have other comments? If no, then uh, perhaps I think uh, okay. we need to revisit this and come up with a more concrete. Uh, Ayun. Yes. Um, I, I do think we need to have a little bit further conversation with yes. this. Um, but if I was to think about the Australian situation at the moment, um, we've had substantial staff losses in, in universities. Uh, my previous university um, removed over 300 staff, um, including staff within the School of Public Health. And one of the things that, um, that uh, Philip was saying was that there is often great support for APAC in departments, but sometimes schools with changing heads of school and other things don't support it to the same degree. So I could see benefits 
in that, for example, my previous university, the Department of Health Promotion, would join APAC as a department, even if the school refused to pay full school membership. Um, so I could see benefits for that. But the modelling would have to be for us to consider what would be the implication of, of that in relation to our future budgets going forward. So that's why I think it does need some further consideration. Um, you don't want areas yes. just trying to opt into the lowest payment. Um, that's not what it's about. Yes, I take your point, uh, 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 Bruce, that I think uh, we need to further discuss this uh, because I think it's a very delicate issue here. Uh, uh, is that all right, Prof. Jimba? We have further discussion on this, perhaps in you know, a smaller committee, a few um, members. Yes, yes. yes. and uh, uh, I, I'm thinking about doing some, uh, uh, having some test period, one year or two year after restructuring the uh, right. new uh, membership fee period. Sure, sure. Uh, and uh, uh, just another thing which came up to my mind is, uh, in order to keep membership, I think we should be more careful to provide some roles to each member institution. Uh, in the past, I've heard some criticism against APAC that uh, moderators and speakers tend to be similar in each annual conference. So uh, even if new members join, uh, they are not easy to get some uh, uh, roles as moderators or speakers. So uh, we may be more careful about these issues to uh, keep the new members and all the members who, who are uh, not very uh, included in the annual conference and other APAC activities. Yeah, thank you so much, Prof. Jimba. I think your, your points are very relevant. And of course, APAC, you know, we try to be as inclusive as possible, right, and exclusive. And so I think for all future conferences, I think it's important to take into account uh, all other members, not just the uh, executive council members who play, you know, a role in all the conferences that we have. Thank you. We will certainly consider that, Prof. Jimba. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, right. Uh, can we now uh, move on? I see that Professor Philip is here. Philip, you're here? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Yes. Uh, could we go through your report then? Yeah. Because your report came out earlier. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I'm unavailable. Okay. Um, can you put it up on the screen? Uh, yes, Fatin will put it up. Yeah. Okay, now, thank you. Uh, for all the regional directors, uh, you don't have to read out the whole report in view of the time limitation. If there's anything that you need to highlight, just present it to the uh, board. Thank you. Okay, yeah. the, key, the, key, the key thing here is um, uh, COVID is having a significant impact upon the financial um, bottom line of Australian universities with um, significant job losses. As um, Bruce has indicated, I'm not sure who has paid their membership fee for this year, but I know in the first time in about 25 years, uh, QUT has not. Um, uh, so uh, uh, this is um, a challenge. Um, we do have other, we've had other in interests from other universities, um, uh, but again, it's come back to the bottom line, such as Griffith wanted, Griffith wanted to join, but um, on hold for financial reasons, and they're letting go of staff, they're not going to be joining. I think that's um, one thing's important is the, um, the, the discussions we had at the um, uh, exec council meeting yesterday regarding um, the director's um, responsibilities. And I think um, making the Australian office, the Oceanic office is, makes a lot of sense. Um, gives some, a broader mandate to engage with New Zealand and, um, and the other um, universities in the region and, and try to get um, Fiji back online as well. So anyways, I'm hoping that maybe uh, 2021 will be um, a better year for us, um, but uh, we really want to make sure that we can re-strengthen our partnerships within APAC, um, but I think it's there are some certain 
um, challenges at um, our universities with doing that. Okay, thank you very much um, for your time. Any right, questions? Thank you, thank you, uh, Prof. Philip. Yeah, so um, we do look forward to having more members, you know, uh, from uh, the Oceana, I know, and also from Australia itself. Yeah. Uh, are there any questions uh, for Prof. Philip? Do we know how many universities have paid Australian this year? Australian universities? Uh, Fatin, Prof. Masna, do you know how many of the Australian universities have paid up? The secretary always send the, 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 the invoices, but I think uh, to answer this would be best from Taipei, Taipei office, because they are the one who really received the payment. Prof. Okay. Cho. Or maybe we can ask the question in the check box and uh, get him to answer in the check box. Sure, but, sure, great. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, are there any further questions yeah. for Prof. Philip before we moved on? Uh, Prof. Which Wai Cho is there? Yeah. Prof Cho, yes. uh, how come the Australian uh, university have actually paid up their fees? How many of the Australian uh, member institution has uh, actually I, paid uh, up? Uh, please give a few minutes. I will uh, ask the office. Check, and, yeah. and, okay, I check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Are there any further comments for Prof Philip before we move on to the next report? Right, if not, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Philip. Right, uh, can we now move on to the next report, please? Fatin? Okay, Prof. Masna? Uh, this is just to update uh, about the registered institution from Malaysia. We have 11 so far, and uh, we have uh, one or two universities who had been the member and then left us. and was very difficult for me to justify to them to rejoin. But otherwise, so we have new potential members uh, and we had sent the invitation, but yet to follow up again. And uh, uh, let's go to number four. I think number four, we have already presented before, but just want to highlight on the, the local um, APEC uh, activities that we have conducted, uh, whereby we include the various uh, local uh, members like NIH, uh, University of Kuala Lumpur, uh, and conducted the, the seminar. Why is this? Okay, and um, I just want to, I, I forgot to mention this now uh, in, in, in my uh, President Admin report. I just want to thank, I uh, would like to thank um, Dr. Bruce, okay, for, for him. Um, managed to secure the grant for for some of our members that is uh, from uh, from Thailand University of Mahido University uh, University of Indonesia from Vietnam as well as University of Philippines and University of Malaya whereby we have this grant under uh, blue communities although it's not from it's not for faculty of medicine but it's, uh, it's still um, uh, under faculty of uh, science as well as faculty of uh, architecture uh, and and the blue community project has been going on very well and uh, I just want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Bruce yeah for, for getting the grant for us and the other one is that um, uh, with, with this COVID situation uh, I'm glad to mention that uh, several uh, local APEC member institutions have been uh, has been called up uh, to join various committees uh, to help the government. For example, the Independent uh, Evaluation Committee on Vaccine, the, uh, and then come up with epi epidemiological modeling. Various universities under, under APEC institutions uh, had been called. And um, uh, this is where we, we had really show that uh, we have matters, yeah. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Masna. Um, any comments from Flo? So it's really good that we have so many members country, about 11 from Malaysia, and uh, we are able to actually, you know, put together all the, you know, all the forces and uh, spearhead uh, uh, public health uh, within Malaysia itself. So, 
Thank you so much, Prof. Masna. Thank you. Right. Uh, can we move on to the next report, please? Fatin. Hey. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, um, uh, Chair Lady. So uh, I would like to start the Taiwan Regional Report now. So the first point is to um, thank you for your kind approval of our new member application, National Chenggong University, uh, which is one of the best uh, top universities in Taiwan and they decided to join the physical induction next year. And uh, uh, for the activity uh, during the past nine months, we actually uh, joined or participated all the activities that are reported by the President Hua Yun. And here I would like to um, bring your attention to two major activities that hosted by us. The first one is the uh, September 11, uh, APAF educational webinar on post COVID-19, we co-hosted with Yonsei University, Korea, and uh, invited speakers from Korea, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, and uh, Japan. The Director General of Taiwan Health Promotion Administration, who is, who, uh, who is also a, a long-term loyal uh, supporter and a member of APAF, uh, Dr. Inwe Wang, uh, give a speech on towards a new normal, live a healthy life during the COVID-19 pandemic in Taiwan. And overall, we had more than 400 online participants in this event. And uh, the second major event is um, also uh, to, uh, together hosted by the Taiwan Regional Office and the CCHP and the Taiwan Health Promotion Administration. We have a two-day uh, Asia Pacific Health Promotion Capacity Building Workshop during the um, October 25th to 26th this year and to uh, carry on the momentum of CCHP. And due to the uh, pandemic, our international trainers from University of Tokyo, National Singapore University, University of Malaya, and the University of Indonesia they deliver their presentations online. And we also have eight local trainers from IPAF member in Taiwan. And together, the trainings were, were trained on topics closely related to the COVID-19 response and the management. And the trainings were uh, expected to comprehend and apply all six health promotion core competencies to achieve the goal of public health promotion in their final project. Yes, please move on. And uh, we have two photos on page 56. Fatin, yeah, please go to the no, next page. Next page. Page 56. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we uh, have a, um, a real classroom in uh, TMU. And uh, we have a total of 72 participants from 16 countries, which is shown in the next photo. Thank you. So uh, this is our Asia Pacific Health Promotion Capacity Building Workshop. And the final point I would like to invite all of you is our future plans for the region. Yeah, please uh, stop at point number five. Yeah, okay. We will continue to update and maintain the uh, CCHP platform. And just by typing APACPH CCHP, you can find our main website, which also uh, offers several micro uh, credentials of uh, footages. Uh, that's free for everyone to use. You're welcome to uh, watch our MOOCs uh, uh, content about the CCHP and also the capacity building. And in future, we would like to uh, look into collaborative research initiatives regarding 
the topics in NCDs, for example, diabetes, climate change, analysis of uh, death cause statistics, and we're still working on it. And uh, we would love to uh, uh, invite uh, all the partners who is interested in this area. Thank you, that's all. Thank you so much, Professor Betty. Uh, I must comment on your effort in actually spearheading this uh, APEC CCHP. And I think tremendous of effort and activities has been done uh, within this uh, collaborating center and by including you know, other member institutions of APEC as well. I, I think uh, there are not more you know, that we could do you know, um, uh, and sharing of experiences, uh, practices uh, uh, within uh, APEC mem member institution. Uh, for the CCHP. Right, can I invite some questions, please? Okay, so we don't have any questions from the floor. Thank you so much again, Prof. Betty. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Right, uh, the next report from Thailand, uh, Professor Siti, Dean of Mahidol University. Well, you, before city have a report, I I ask you a, a query. In 2019, uh, there are two universities in Australia pay the membership, and uh, in 2020, only one. Okay. Right. Uh, Prof. Philip, have you got that? In 2019, we only got two Australian UC who has paid up, and last year, this year, 2020, we have only got one university. Yeah. Yeah. So that answer your question. So that means we need to. Uh, uh, you know, do more uh, as to get them to pay their subscription fees. Okay. Can right. you send me through the details of which universities those are? Yeah. I think it's important for Philip to know which universities, you know. Because we actually had three attendees last oh, year. Yeah. The, uh, three <coughs> universities attended. In, in 2020 is uh, Curtin, and two, uh, 2019 is uh, uh, South Wales and the Queensland, New South Wales and the Queensland, yeah. Well, so Curtin paid this year? Yep, Curtin paid this year, but not paid last year, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Right, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Professor Sitiya, are you there? I'm sorry, Philip, just for the record, that was the act of the business manager before she resigned. So, okay, so the, the dean didn't know. <laughs> okay. That's a good move, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That reminds me of a story in the Bible of people doing things quickly before they, they leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, Professor City, are you there? Yes. You know, you see? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um. From our office, um, we still think of the, the APEC conference, which was very successful. And thank you all the APEC members for supporting us. Um, we have not uh, moved that much because of the COVID. But one new thing is I have a new deputy dean in international relations who was the former uh, uh, deputy dean. I think you all know her. Professor Arawan, who sits with me today, and she will help working with the APEC uh, in the future. The second point, we have changed the policy and after the lockdown, we all just started to have almost uh, on-site activities starting from uh, August. So uh, um, during that time of COVID, there's also uh, election uh, of the Dean's Council of Thailand School of Public Health uh, in relation to the community uh, public health association as well. So I've been elected to lead and become the member of the professionals. Uh, because of that, uh, I have connect with different school of public health in Thailand. Uh, and I hope that they will all join uh, APEC in the future. Regarding the international collaboration activities, Mahidon University have changed a little bit too. Everything is online. So uh, starting from November, we have organized 
uh, to symposium with the Kobe University and Kyoto University on the COVID epidemic, infodemic, and health literacy. Uh, we also have an international study tour with the Fujian Medical University in China regarding the health system, which I think those are the key achievement of Thai health system for the COVID-19. Uh, but starting from now, uh, I have planned to organize uh, activities which I would like to share our uh, file. Can I share my file? Fatin. Fatin? Siti wants to share. Let me, let me start. Is this one? Which one? Okay. Uh, do you see my file? No. Fatin. Fatin. Yes, bro. You want me to share yours? Yeah, just only one slide. The original report, right? This one. No, no, no. Oh, I no, have, no. I have a new, just it's one page. Oh, you have to uh, start sharing screen. Yeah, but I think you have to take this down, right? Yeah. Just press the uh, green button, share screen there. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, you all see? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, we planned to have uh, four activities at the moment. There will be there will be more, but uh, in February we will have a series of global online course on my grand health, which we organize with the. Uh, Health and Global Policy Institute Japan. Global Policy uh, Japan. Institute from Japan. And this one will be a series of global online course that I can invite the students or faculty members from APAC uh, countries. Uh, that will be in February. In March, we will try to organize international student exchange and we will put it, uh, the announcement up in our website. Uh, July 2021, 20, a virtual short course training on Thailand health system and COVID-19. This one will be a combination of the uh, virtual site visit, which we usually have it with, the, with our partner, uh, Wisconsin School of, Medic uh, School of Public Health and uh, uh, another partners in the US. So we can also open up for the APAC members. Lastly, uh, in August next year, we plan to have the Positive Deviant Hybrid Conference, which referred to us by Professor Jimba, University of Tokyo, and now we are finalizing the network from Oxford University and the PD International Network, which is still uh, uh, planning for the August. The details will be up on our website, uh, which you can see here. So uh, I think we will try to do our best to have more members and to share our experience from uh, this region. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. City. Right. Uh, any questions from the floor? Maybe Professor Jimba can endorse the August conference <laughs> for the PD. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I, I'm closely in contact with uh, a specialist in UK. And he used to work in Save the Children for many years. And uh, we, I think we are going to have it at the end of August, August 30, 31, and uh, September 1, you know, about this yeah. period. And uh, we have uh, sufficient time to prepare for it. And uh, this is going to be an uh, exciting conference. Right. We are, uh, we are waiting for the vaccine. And after that, we can come and uh, have more on site. You know, we miss you all. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't we all? Okay, thank you so much, Professor Siti. Thank you.
Right. Uh, let let us now move on to the next agenda, and that's uh, actually there is another regional report, right, by Professor Yunan Lu, but unfortunately he's not here, and I don't think we have his uh, report. Anyway, uh, right. The next agenda, uh, Prof. Inika, would you like to give us an update of uh, the conference tomorrow? Yeah. Prof. Inika. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, I would like to thank the APAC Executive Committee and the members for giving us this opportunity. As you are aware, this conference was organized at very short notice and considering the time gap, I think it was about three or four months ago, ago that we have confirmed that we are going to make the 2020 conference an online one. And uh, as SLMA and the University of Colombo, we have decided to take up challenge. So we, are start, we have actually started the conference two days ago and uh, started with a very successful scientific writing workshop where the resource persons were uh, APEC president herself and uh, the editor-in-chief, Professor Vayun and Professor Colin Bins, and then uh, from Sri Lanka, Dr. B.J. C. Pereira, a very successful workshop on scientific writing. And uh, then yesterday we had uh, another workshop, the Early Career Network workshop, again, very well participated. Both workshops, the number of participants were more than 100. Uh, so, and very well uh, active and then a uh, lot of participation was there. Now, tomorrow we are starting the conference. Uh, you can see a lot of international resource persons. Actually, most of the top international, global and public health resource persons will be coming uh, into tomorrow's conference. And uh, top leaders like uh, Sir Michael Mahmoud and Professor Shirat Reddy and uh, Professor Michael, uh, Professor Malik Piris was involved in discovery of the SARS uh, virus some time ago. All of them are resource persons and all the top public health institutions worldwide, they are providing the resource expertise tomorrow. You can see uh, these are some of the resource persons and there are some familiar faces as well. And uh, so tomorrow and day after, and it's going to be both physical, virtual, and uh, then video conferencing with the immersive hybrid uh, technology coming in together Hello. and the virtual environment, the augmented reality, virtual reality experience will be there. For example, the photo exhibition as well as the, uh, the oral and poster presentations will be through the virtual reality technology. Can we have a look at the, look at the video of the photo exhibition? What you'll be seeing is uh, actually a video, how we will be using the virtual reality and the augmented reality for the APAC reflections photo exhibition for the first time. So you can navigate through the system and go through the photos and enjoy them like uh, you are doing in maybe a conference venue in Sri Lanka or anywhere else. So this is just a video. Similarly, uh, the oral presentations, we have received over 420 oral presentations and which we have again included into the virtual reality environment. So again, during the time period allocated for oral presentations, you can go through them, visit them, and enjoy them at your free time. All these are available in our virtual platform. So this time it will give a lot of visibility. Now you can see a lot of new technology we have used in this conference because that's also in line with the new normal that we are thinking about. Then uh, regarding the conference participation, uh, all the exco members are given complement registration. Similarly, all the members of the General Assembly who are the presidents, vice presidents of universities and the deans, uh, they are given free registration. I think most of you must have received your links to the registration. How, if you haven't received, email me with your name and the email address. We need both details to register you because it's an automated system that we are producing the links for the registration. The admission to the conference will be basically like you are attending this Zoom, but the link will be sent to all of you. Uh, and if you haven't got the link, email to me. I'll put my email address here with your name as well as the email address. So you need both details. And some of your universities, you want to send groups of members. So again, the same applies. If you haven't got the registration, send me the names of the members as well as their respective email addresses uh, so that we can put them to the, in, into the system. 
which is automated system but uh, i request you to send the details as soon as possible because the time is limited and uh, there is a lot of preparation to go if you can email uh, to them uh, to me i can make the necessary arrangement and uh, again the registration is complimentary for the exco and the deans and the vice presidents other staff members again uh, we are ready to provide the concession registration fee of 50 us dollars again uh, doesn't matter if you send the names we will put in the system we can sort out others because what we really want is participation from everyone and we are attending uh, we request you to join from your respective universities and i can see some universities are joining as groups which is also fine by us because what we want is participation and tomorrow we will be starting sri lanka time 8:30 and going to be a very ceremonial event so all i invite all of you to enjoy because the whole conference is organized in such a way that we are going to give the taste and the experience of sri lanka at least in the virtual way the whole conference in plan in that way and lot of important symposium coming in so i invite you to join and enjoy and uh, learn together from the conference thank you very much okay thank you so much uh, prof indika uh Does anyone has any questions about a conference tomorrow? It's going to start tomorrow. Yeah. Well, then I expect all of you to be there and play an active role uh, uh, in the conference itself. Thank you so much, Prof. Inka. Thank you. Uh, can I now invite? Uh, Why you? Yes, Bruce. Why you? Um, it's not. A, it's not a um, question about the conference, but um, I just think that. This year has been remarkable in relation to the level of stress that public health people have found themselves under, and I think the general assembly sometimes um, might not understand just how much effort some of the members of the executive have taken this year in doing, you know, the various um, webinars that have been run, the short um, program with the the. Uh, Sri Lankan Medical Association and APAC combining only a little while ago, and now once again, you know Sri Lanka stepping in at very short notice and offering services. And I'm sure that our members have actually seen that during this period of stress, APAC actually didn't retreat. APAC has actually stood up, and it's taken it's taken a very central role in relation to COVID and trying to educate and support members. So. So I would just like a Secretary General to, you know, heartily just thank Indica and the rest of the team who who has come together at a very stressful time to ensure that we actually are able to still provide service for our members. Thank you very much, Bruce. And you can see the effort that has gone in. I would say it's beyond imagination the the effort that we had to get through, uh, go through to make this conference a reality. I thank everyone uh, in the APAC Executive Committee, the resource persons, and also our technical committee at the faculty and the SLME. They have done a huge amount of work. But tomorrow, I think, is going to be fantastic. So expect the unexpected for tomorrow. Thank you. Yes. Indeed, you know, uh, we thank the New South Colombo and uh, SLMA, and especially your IT team, you, you know, in in hosting this uh, conference uh, at the very last minute. Right. Uh, if we have no other questions or comments, then I think we move on to the last agenda for this meeting. Could I invite Dean Santi Martini, uh, New Minister of Air Lanka, to give us an update of uh, next year's conference? Dean Santi. Uh... Good afternoon, Prof. Lo. Um, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Stanti has uh, another meeting, another agenda. So, on behalf of the dean, I would like to report the uh, progress of the 52nd APEC uh, conference in 2021. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. First of all, we would like to um, extend our gratitude to Prof. Indika and team in Sri Lanka who step up for the 2020 APEC conference. On short notice, we are thank you very much. And furthermore, related to our plan in 2021, we will proceed with uh, the APEC in the uh, hybrid concept of online and offline conference. It will be held on the 27th and 28th of October 2021. 
and the output of the abstract submitted we want to have it uh, index in scopus index journal and we really hope that our own journal asia pacific journal of public health is going to be the main uh, target for our uh, results uh, next the conference schedule itself it contains executive council meeting and then pre-conference in 25 and 26 october and the conference is going to be the 27 and 28 and the last day it's going to be virtual and on-site uh, tour related to uh, surabaya and its surrounding as i mentioned before it's going to be a uh, hybrid uh, semi-virtual and uh, virtual and offline conference. As of now, we already invited 23 speakers for the conference, and mostly we're going to invite uh, the executive uh, members of the APEC as well as the speaker for pre conference uh, workshop. Our call for paper we're going to start on January 1st, and then uh, the deadline for early bird is on uh, June 30th. And overall, the, uh, what do you call, the submission is going to be free, but for the registration, uh, more or less, we have around one, uh, 150 US dollars. And it's going to be different between those who present offline and also online uh, participant. As of uh, December 1st, 2020, because our website is already running since last year, uh, we have already total registered abstract is 132 and total registered participant are 200. And the venue is going to be held offline in Sangrila Hotel Surabaya. We already signed the contract with the uh, hotel. And for pre-conference workshop, dean's meeting and executive council Meeting is going to be held in Universitas Erlangga Campus C, so in our own uh, university. And for the pre-workshop session, we will have uh, five um, theme from law and ethic in public health, scientific writing in publication, early career network, policy analysis in public health, quantitative occupational risk assessment and occupational needs assessment detoxification for chemical hazard. Along with that, we have several uh, symposium session and the topic for oral and poster presentation is quite uh, wide. We have around 47 uh, topics with nine topics specific related to COVID-19. Our participants uh, ranging from researchers, decision makers, health professional, public health professional, lecturers and also students. As uh, we know that in Indonesia, uh, master and PhD students are usually required to have exposure with international conference. So this is going to be a big opportunity for us to spread public health work that we have around the region to uh, enrich our students as well. Our target for offline participants is aligned with the COVID-19 protocol in the Sangrila Hotel, the biggest hotel in Surabaya, we target for 400 attendees. And for the online one, we target for around 700 uh, participants. So we hope that next year, the COVID-19, uh, along with the uh, distribution of the vaccine, is going to be successful and the pandemic is going to be reduced and we will have a great conference for hybrid offline and online uh, next year. For the source of budget, we have from APEC, Universitas Erlangga, and also from Universitas Indonesia as our co-host. And we also have registration fee from Ministry of Health and other resources. Our uh, partner that is already confirmed is uh, Union, Ministry of Health, UNFPA, WHO Indonesia, CDC, John Hopkins University, Latrop University, Vitamin Angel and UNICEF Indonesia. Thank you very much for your kind collaboration and see you next year in Surabaya, Indonesia. Thank you, Prof. Lu.
Right. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Arif. Thank you. Uh, thanks to uh, I think Prof. Uh, Thierry uh, Matiana is also there, and Prof. Uh, Newman is also there. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and it's great to know that you, know, you have all the partnerships as well, you know, for your conference. And I trust the next year, you know, uh, with the full support of APAC and uh, with all the members, you know, attending, uh, you know, I'm sure it will be a great event. Uh, can I invite other comments, please? Any other comments? If no, thank you so much, New City of Lanka. So we look forward to, uh, you know, to attending the conference physically next year, hopefully, if the COVID situation is, uh, it, it's over with. Right, uh, thank you again. And last but not least, uh, before I close the session, are there any burning issues that any members would like to raise? Uh, Prof Law, I would like to remind that uh, next year uh, at the AGM, there will be election for right. Vice President 1, Vice President 2, President elect. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Right, any other issues? If no, then I think uh, we are done here. We have covered everything in the agenda. And thank you so much you know, for all your presence here to all the deans. Uh, or your associate uh, who are here, you know, and thank you all for your input. It's a, it's a, it's a really good uh, meeting uh, with active participation. And I'm great, grateful, you know, that we have, uh, yes, Professor Lakswanswa, would you like to say something? You have raised your hand. Uh, I think from Mongolia, right? Professor Lakswa Suran. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I'm joining from the Mongolia. I'm yes. the professor called Havasring. Uh, I'm really appreciate uh, to join this all of you, and I would like to express my gratitude on behalf of the uh, National Mongolian University of Medical Sciences and School of Public Health. And I was the, one of the member of APAC in 1995 until 2000 more than 20 years before, so old, you know. And I've been in a school of, uh, at the School of uh, Public Health, Mahidol University in Indonesia, Malaysia, in that time. Uh, now, uh, the School of Public Health, under the umbrella of our university, uh, it, our university, the Dean School of Public Health is uh, Mrs. Uh, Dawa Al Kham. She is very ambitious, very active. And I would like to her to join the APAC member and to it. Uh, it is a very benefit for to share the experience, to learn from each other. And I remember the our university was one of the host university for a pet meeting in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, many years before. And I hope the School of Public Health, our, our university is continually joining with a PAC uh, activity. And I wish very success to all deans School of Public Health, all uh, public health schools, great success in the next future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Professor Laksonsuran. Yes, uh, I believe our cyber university, uh, Yongsai University, is also very active uh, oh, yeah. uh, in, in, in Mongolia, yeah, you know, at your university. And so, yes. yeah, so we look forward to, you know, working more with you than in, in Mongolia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Prof, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank are there any course. other issues from anyone? If no, then uh, I think we have come to the end of this uh, AGM meeting. And uh, thank you so much for all your input. Uh, we will see each other again uh, at the conference tomorrow. But just a reminder that this afternoon, uh, I think within two hours time, we have another session, uh, the Dean's meeting. So again, I'll invite all of you to join in you know, at the Dean's meeting. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Bye now. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.
Well done, Inca Indigo. When you can go from sun kissed to mountain mist in just four hours, that's so Sri Lanka. When dolphins and whales swim around you all year so you can visit them at any time, that's so Sri Lanka. When a bicycle ride in the countryside is one long roadside party of board games, quirky friends, and the world's best cup of tea, that is so Sri Lanka. When every sunset is an aphrodisiac, and the knights command you to dance them away. That's so Sri Lanka. When you can marvel at elephants in the morning and then meet some exotic birds, bears, and leopards for lunch, that's so Sri Lanka. When you can get an eye full of paradise and a heart full of adrenaline in a single afternoon, that's so Sri Lanka. When people brave dizzying heights to taste a bus of fresh, warm toddy. Mm -mm. That's so Sri Lanka. When feasting together makes your family, so we take every opportunity to indulge. That's so Sri Lanka. When time slows down and urges you to as well. So you can soak up the full magic of cultural treasures at every turn. Storied street food made with love for three millennia. 360 degrees of ocean. 365 days a year. Hugging lush forests, misty meadows, secret waterfalls, and ordinary Wednesdays. That is so Sri Lanka. When you surrender to every minute, becoming your new favorite memory on Earth's favorite island. So wild, so pristine, so scenic, so thrilling, so spiritual, so bold, so colorful. That's so Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, a journey awaits.